Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're gonna to be talking about the debut album from the rap duo Step Brothers, comprised of The Alchemist and Evidence, and the album titled Lord Steppington. Now, you know you've become a music nerd when you start following other people besides the actual artists when it comes to albums. Sure, the artist often has his or her own unique presence and style, and of course you get some artists that will handle every element of their production and their music, writing, music, production, everything, but not all of them do, and thus there are other talents behind the scenes that deserve some degree of attention. In country music, for instance, since most modern country acts don't write all of their own music, yeah, believe that, it's a good idea to keep an eye out for certain songwriters that you might like or have a certain idiosyncratic style. And in hip hop, you want to keep your eye on certain producers, the people who have a reputation for creating really interesting beats and mixes for certain acts to rap or sing over, which will take us to the group we're going to be talking about today. If you're familiar at all with underground hip hop, you should be familiar with both of these men, both hip hop producers and rappers in their own right. The first is The Alchemist, known for being the DJ who works with Shady Records and Eminem, but he also has a selection of very well received critically acclaimed albums under his belt. The second man in question is Evidence, who I last talked about on his collaboration with LMNO on the team-up album After the Fact, which came out last year, and ended up making my list of the best albums of 2013. Now, The Alchemist and Evidence, they've worked together plenty of times before, and they didn't really intend on doing a straight team up until they realized by happenstance that they, they managed to have enough tracks for a full length collaboration. So they called their new duo Step Brothers, brought together a whole group of underground rappers with whom they've collaborated with over the past decade for verses, and they finally dropped a new album titled Lord Steppington. Now, let me stress this. I have been psyched about this album since I heard about it months ago, as it reminded me a lot of the last underground hip hop collaboration that I covered, which was Run the Jewels by Killer Mike and LP, and which was one of the best albums of the year. So, how did this collaboration turn out? Well, here's the funny thing. Lord Stepping Ten by Step Brothers is an album that's effectively doing many of the same things as Run the Jewels, so you know what? Let's get the comparisons out of the way right now. No, it's not better than Run the Jewels, but it's still damn good. Damn good! The first legitimately great album of 2014 and definitely worth your listen. At the same time though, it's an album that requires both patience and a lot of repeated listens because there's a lot going on throughout this record and neither the Alchemist, Evidence, nor their long list of collaborators, they're not going to make things easy for you. So okay, let's start with the obvious selling point of this record. The lyrics. Like with LMNO's collaboration album with Evidence last year, Lord Steppington prides itself on being a defiantly anti-corporate rap album, and has a marked focus on casting all manner of scorn and derision on mainstream hip-hop. And like with Run the Jewels, this album gets there through superb multi-syllabic poetry and wordplay, emphasizing intelligence and hard work over luxury or popularity. But while it does have its fair share of Look at me, I'm awesome tracks, Step Brothers goes the extra mile and dumps a load of nuance and subtext under the conversation, which makes things a whole lot more complicated. The two men often play off a very certain contrast. The Alchemist raps the more traditional, hard-edged, gangsta stereotype, while Evidence provides deft commentary on the whole proceeding from the sidelines, and often delivers the more insightful, layered punchlines. So yeah, it's very much in the vein of how Killer Mike and LP structured their interplay. I'd argue that Evidence and The Alchemist do things a little bit differently. For one, the album doesn't really specifically target any specific rappers, unlike Run the Jewels, which had its eyes clearly focused on Jay-Z and Kanye, instead targeting the industry and mainstream rap scene at large through subtle jibes and insults that you'll miss if you're not paying attention. Both these men use their status as veterans in the underground to critique the vapidity and gangsta image with a much harsher criticism by showing how shallow and immature wallowing in sex and money really is. And with songs like Draw Some, Thing. They focus more on the creative process of making a good rap album and using raw intellect and cunning to elevate themselves. They cast themselves through the album as collaborating lords, speaking above political and social boundaries to a larger audience. And yet there's a running motif throughout the album of an Indian lord trying and failing to get out of a parking ticket. It's a very simple but effective metaphor that underscores the entire record. As well as the alchemist and evidence, they might consider themselves lords, they've 
both realize that their power has a limited radius and one that only shrinks if they grow complacent. And even that power or fame could slip away at any second at a moment's notice, as underscored on the chilling track See the Rich Man Play, which parallels the hip hop scene with a seedy, smoke filled casino vibe for haunting effect. Now, part of the reason why that song, hell, the entire album is so effective is in the instrumentation and the production. Now I will say that I was a little disappointed that Evidence only contributed production work on one track, or at least one major production work on one track, but the Alchemist more than makes up for it with a really compelling fusion of music on the best tracks. The grimy, scratchy, heavily 90s inspired hip hop sound, then fusing it all with melodies that are derived from old school, soul, jazz, classical music, and even hints of rock. The track Legendary Mesh, for instance, has this eerie guitar soul looping in the background that contrasts perfectly off the chilling sleigh bells and pulsating futuristic sound and it really creates an effective atmosphere and really creating atmosphere is where this album earns huge points for me the entire album has this air of grandeur that's fading and cracking around the edges old school class that intentionally doesn't quite mesh with the grimier production and it's a perfect balance between opulence and sleaze in other words when this album inevitably references the great gatsby as it does on the second track it's a reference that makes plenty of sense with the instrumentation as well as the lyrics and it was really quite cohesive and immersive. Now that being said, there are seams that show in some of the production, particularly in some of the sampling with vocal track, as there are points where the vocals and the backing track clash a bit with the rappers in terms of volume, and it's a little bit awkward. A bigger issue in my opinion comes up in the tempo. Don't get me wrong, it fits the rappers in question, it allows them to lay down some seriously impressive wordplay, but I can't help but feel that a faster clip or a little bit more energy throughout this record could have made it a lot stronger, a lot more accessible to some people. Now, part of the this issue comes down to the rappers themselves and as I've said, they're both great on this record. I can count the number of rhymes or flubbed lines on one hand for all the rappers in question on this record, and that's saying something. Now, a few might take issue that a few of the Alchemist lyrics can be a little bit corny. There's a lot of references to baked goods of all things on this album, and they don't always land effectively. But my bigger problem comes down to the overall tone from the rappers. I had this issue with Elmino as well, and that the poetry was phenomenal, but the presentation could do with a little bit more energy or force to really stand out. But this ties back to the issue to have how serious we should actually take this album. You can tell that there are sly jokes throughout this record that really do go over well, but for the most part, these guys are playing things fairly straight, which, to be fair, isn't a bad thing, and it works like gangbusters for the smartive, more incisive tracks. But it does mean that some of the bragging tracks don't quite land with the same impact. To put it another way, there are points where they really stepped it up hard with their delivery, I just wish they had stepped a little harder. And on that note, the hooks on this album, well, they aren't bad, but some of them aren't great either. The worst of them being Stepmasters, where the chorus just sounded obnoxious to me and not in a good way with them dragging out the syllables. So, in summary, The Alchemist and Evidence put together a lyrically dense album with some potent beats and great textured production. It's the kind of album that where having Rap Genius open while listening can only help catch some of the wit flowing from line to line. It's a subtle record, and as I said before, it's not looking to make things easy on you. Now, it's not flawless, though. A quicker tempo, maybe some tighter, more catchy hooks, and a bit more energy could have made this album something extremely special. As it is, it's a great hip-hop album that has a lot of wit, a lot of nuance, earning an 8 out of 10 from me, and a definite recommendation. It's now with a decidedly 90 sensibilities when it comes to wordplay and some of the production, but when it's this smart, when it's this insightful, and when it's this well-presented, I can can't deny that for me, it works. Check it out. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. If there's any other albums coming out this year that you'd like me to talk about, or if there's anything I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'd be more than happy to take a listen. Until then, see you next time.